This session is like no other due to the ongoing response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Capitol buildings are closed to the public. Legislators are using technology to conduct business. Can you tell us from your perspective what this remote session looks like and feels like to you? The 2021 legislative session is gonna be completely different. We went to Olympia on the 11th, the opening day of the legislative session and amended the house rules to allow for a virtual operation of the house. So I'm actually located in the Walla Walla district office right now. A couple of years ago, I ran a resolution to bring remote testimony to the house committee system. So we had a pilot that was operational last year. This year, because of COVID and the 100% virtual format, residents in Eastern Washington will be able to testify in any committee on any bill. So that's the improvement. The downside will be lack of physical access to the Capitol building and in-person meetings with legislators and advocacy groups. So I would say that it's a mix of good and bad, but I encourage those who want to participate virtually to go to the legislative website, ledge.wa.gov, and read about the virtual options there. People want to know, how can they keep in touch with you? How do they participate in the legislative process in this virtual world? I'm always available and was before by email, skylar.rude at ledge.wa.gov. I take meetings with any constituent that requests a meeting, even in the busyness of the legislative session. So if there are bills that come up that you feel passionately about, feel free to reach out to my office and schedule a meeting there. Last Friday evening, the House had their first real vote of the 2021 session. This vote was on a resolution to indefinitely extend the governor's authority to operate under certain emergency proclamations he issued in response to COVID. How did you vote on this proclamation and why? I voted no, but that was a troubling vote for me because uh, since the pandemic started in March, we've seen basically exclusive decision-making and policy-making coming from the executive branch through proclamation, which is the legal right of the governor to do that. But, you know, we're nine months into this pandemic now, and the legislature is back in session. What that resolution did was took all of the proclamations that are active, over 20, and extended them indefinitely through the state of emergency, however long that may last. That's up to the governor. But I think what we missed out on is an important opportunity that we would typically see with a bill for committee testimony and public input. There's really no way to gauge from the public which of these proclamations are working well and which are not. So for that reason, I voted no. It is an odd numbered year, which means the regular legislative session will last for 105 days. What are your priorities this session? Do you have any particular bills you will or have introduced? Thanks for that question. I definitely have several bills that may be of interest. I think it's important to note that the overarching issues that I think are most important for legislators are related to economic recovery. And we've heard from the business community concerns about unemployment insurance rates skyrocketing. And and so that's something that needs to be addressed. There are also concerns around in-person instruction for our students. And I care deeply about K-12 and ensuring that each student has access to a high quality education. And I think all of us would agree that in-person instruction is preferred and a more effective way to instruct a a school-aged child. As far as specific bills, others are taking the lead on those issues. I am continuing to work on the Death with Dignity Act. I have had multiple constituents from the Walla Walla area express concerns that the law does not work well. So I worked on that last year and I'm working on it again. Something else that independent voters may find interesting The Secretary of State has requested legislation to provide a non-affiliated option on the presidential primary ballot. And considering all taxpayers are funding the presidential primary, I agree with her that providing an option for those who don't want to affiliate with one of the parties to participate in that process. So I'm excited about that bill. Thank you again for spending the time with me today in our short update video. Feel free to go to my website, which is representative You can find my contact information there. And as always, I'm happy to serve you. Thank you.